Once you've got your hive on the way, the next step is to secure a source for bees. I'm Rebecca with Bee Thinking, and in this video we'll be talking about methods and tips for sourcing the best honeybees for the coming season. First and foremost, we recommend getting connected with your local beekeepers association. Talk to as many experienced beekeepers in your area as possible. They will often have advice on the best place to get bees for your climate. Honeybees adapt quickly, and there are many strains that thrive in different climates. That's why our favorite way to get bees is to catch feral swarms. A swarm is not the same thing as a herd of cows or a pack of dogs, but rather it describes the natural process by which honeybee colonies reproduce. The colony raises a new queen, and the original queen leaves the hive with about half the worker bees. Swarms land on structures close to their original hive, and scout bees leave the cluster in search of a new hive location. It is in this stage that swarms can be captured and used to populate an empty hive. The benefits of populating your hive with a swarm are, they are local to the area they were found in and are almost always guaranteed to have survived the winter in that climate. They were strong enough to split in early spring. They are prepared to start building comb immediately and they can be transferred into any hive style. Populating hives with swarms helps to propagate strong genetics for local honeybee populations. While the word swarm may sound pretty intimidating, honeybees are actually the most docile during this stage. They do not have any honey or brood to protect, and before leaving the hive, they drink up as much honey as they can carry. Full bees have a hard time stinging and are focused on their temporary situation while they find a new home. Swarms can be caught or baited and trapped. Set your traps and join local swarm lists by early spring. Swarm season in the Pacific Northwest begins in early March and ends around late June. For more information about baiting and trapping swarms, check out McCartney Taylor's book, Swarm Traps and Bait Hives. Swarms can occur later in the season, but are usually small and don't have enough time left in the season to start a new colony and produce enough honey stores to survive the coming winter. Swarm catching is becoming very popular in the beekeeping hobby, so getting a swarm to populate your hive is not a guarantee. If you plan to begin your hive this year, you will want to have a source for bees secured well before the season starts. Reserving a honeybee package is one of the only ways to guarantee a source for bees able to populate any hive style. They come as green boxes with one mated queen in a cage and three pounds of worker bees. This is about 10,000 individuals. When choosing your package supplier, we recommend taking the following into account. Buy local. This will minimize environmental impact of trucking or flying them across the country and may provide you with bees that are better acclimated to your area. Buy hygienic. In today's Varroa mite dominated world, bees that innately groom themselves and the rest of the hive of mites will have a significant advantage over bees that don't. Look for Russian or suppressed mite reproduction, SMR, honeybee strains for this behavior. Buy treatment free. Determine whether the package supplier is treatment free. If they do use treatments, find out which ones they're using. Cutting a colony off from chemicals they're used to can be fatal. If you plan on going treatment free, wean them off those chemicals slowly. If you are local to the Portland area, we offer bee packages that follow these criteria for an in-store pickup only. Packages sell quickly, so find an apiary near you to reserve one as early as possible. Most beekeepers reserve their packages by January. One of the most common methods of obtaining bees is to get a nuke from a breeder. A nuke, short for nucleus hive, is a mini hive with three to five built out frames of honey and brood with one queen and enough worker bees to maintain and expand the colony. Frames can be transferred into a full size hive. Configuration and hive style permitting, nukes are one of the best ways to start your colony. The colony will grow faster than packaged bees since they already have brood and honey stores, and installation is much less stressful for the bees and the keeper. Nukes commonly come in deep Langstroth frames in a cardboard or a wooden box, so this reflects the most common method of beekeeping in North America. As demand for medium frame nukes and alternative hive style nukes increase, new versions may become available. We do not recommend cutting down deep Langstroth nuke frames to fit alternative hive styles. This chop and crop method is extremely stressful for both parties. If you are a beginning beekeeper starting a war A or top bar hive, 
purchasing a package or catching a swarm will be your best bet. A nuke box can be an invaluable tool for the beekeeper to have on hand. We make nuke boxes compatible with top bar hives, medium, and deep length straw hives. Swarms can be caught in empty nuke boxes, and after they start building comb, it can be transferred into a compatible hive. That way, they don't have to be dumped into their permanent hive right away. Empty boxes can be kept in your trunk along with your gear, so you're prepared for swarm calls during the height of season. We also prefer installing bee packages into nuke boxes, especially if a cold snap occurs right when your bees arrive. Being installed in a smaller space is less overwhelming and requires less energy to heat. Once the bees start building comb, it can easily be transferred into a full hive. Nuke boxes also come in handy when performing splits. This is a method by which beekeepers of all hive styles use to populate new hives by splitting strong, existing colonies. Splits are done by moving frames or top bars of brood, including unhatched eggs, honey, and nurse bees into a nuke and then ultimately into a full hive. Make sure the old and new hives have either an existing queen or unhatched eggs. The queenless hive can raise a new queen by feeding larvae from unhatched eggs, only royal jelly. Once an egg hatches and the larva is fed bee bread, it can no longer be made into a queen and is destined to be a worker bee. We like populating empty hives with splits in early spring because it allows us to spread the strong genetics of surviving colonies after winter. Each beekeeper has their own preference for obtaining bees. If you're starting out with more than one hive, try out multiple methods to see what works best for you. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to catch all of our latest videos and go on over to our website, beethinking.com and check it out.